Well, further up north, Canadian transportation authorities have revised the number of people killed when a freight train derailed in Quebec earlier this month. They now say the remains of 42 people have been recovered and five others are still missing, presumed dead. Let's now get more on this from our correspondent Christian Yeo, who's standing by in Toronto. Christian, what are the latest developments? Well, as you said there, Michelle, the uh, Canadian Transportation Safety Board has updated us on the recovery effort and the investigation into the cause of this crash. You'll remember that the initial focus was on the railway company responsible for the train involved. That's Montreal, Maine and Atlantic. But the debate about rail safety has really widened now to encompass the whole industry. So much so that any lessons learned from this are likely to affect all rail operators in Canada and potentially shareholders as well. Since July 6, investigators in Lac Megantic have tirelessly trawled through the crash site, searching for bodies and for clues to help this community make sense of what happened. But the answers carry weight in the rest of Canada and the US as well, as ever more sensitive freight is moved by rail. We can only cling to the hope that your tragedy will serve as a cautionary warning for those who would put their own profit above the safety of others. The tragedy at Lac Megantic is the inevitable result of a system that has lost its moral compass. The Canadian government is accused of letting the industry regulate itself, and the Transportation Safety Board wants to see the rules strengthened and better enforced. We're asking Transport Canada to review all railway operating procedures to ensure that trains carrying dangerous goods are not left unattended on the main track. Investigators say one of the problems with the current rules is that too much is left to the discretion of the train staff. In this case, investigators say it appears not enough brakes were applied. Regulators have long recommended using reinforced cars when moving products like oil, a measure that campaign groups also support. They're putting it into rail cars that the Canadian Transportation Safety Board and the U.S. National Transportation Safety Board have said are simply unsafe. When they derail, they tend to rupture. They break and they spill. When that happens with a flammable product like oil, there's a good chance it's going to burn. So reinforced tankers are just one way of making the rails safer. Automatic safety brakes are another, but they're all expensive and they're not compulsory. So up until now, rail companies have made do without them. They might not have that luxury for much longer, Michelle. Well, Christian, it's a not so appropriate question to ask at such a sensitive time, but what impact could this accident now have on profitability? Well, if we look at the country's largest railway company, that's Canada National Railways, just after the crash, the bank CIBC downgraded the stock rating and the quarter two earnings forecast. But just this evening, Canada National exceeded expectations, reporting a quarterly profit of just under 700 million US dollars. So this is by no means a, a cash poor company. None of them are, and they could easily afford the safety uh, increases that are required of them. What's more worrying in the long term is if we look at Canada National again, a lot of that profits derived from the energy sector, from moving freight like oil. And many fear that now Lac Megantic could be used in the argument to push for pipeline projects like Keystone XL, which would ultimately take market share away from the rail companies. So there's more shakiness around the rail firms and more of a buzz and, and optimism around the pipeline companies, TransCanada and Enbridge. So what was a blossoming relationship between rail and the energy sector could itself be derailed soon, Michelle? Mm, right, a lot of factors there. Thank you so much, Christian Yeo, live for us in Toronto.